Good evening. I'm Steve Kornacki in for Chris Matthews. Let me start tonight with the growing humanitarian and political crisis along the U.S. Mexico border, where the situation looks to be deteriorating and quickly. Border facilities are being inundated by a flood of unaccompanied minors trying to cross into the U.S. More than 50,000 have been apprehended since October. President Obama is openly pleading with undocumented immigrants not to send their children to the border. His message even if they do make it, they will get sent back. Things have only been made worse by gridlock in Washington, with Republicans officially killing any hopes for immigration reform on the grounds that they cannot trust the president, an issue which could potentially hand the White House to Democrats on a silver platter in 2016. But it's hardly quiet on the left either. President Obama now faces an agitated Hispanic base that has lost patience with the situation has begun to blame him for the increase in deportations. Everyone and everything seems to be near a breaking point, and things got a scary yesterday afternoon when crowds of anti-immigration protesters surrounded three buses that were attempting to transport roughly 140 undocumented immigrants to a processing center in Southern California. What followed was a tense standoff between police ordering the crowd to disperse and activists refusing to step aside and chanting things like, go home. We don't want you here. With tensions simmering, the buses eventually gave up and turned around. The situation only growing more tense, you might be seeing a lot more of those kinds of confrontations. Pro Race is an attorney and columnist with USA Today. Dan Stein is the president of the Federation for American Immigration Reform. So, Dan, you know, you, you're one of those groups that's been, you know, sort of hitting the president from the right on, on immigration. So, look, I, whatever side you're coming from on this, when you look at all of these issues and all of these problems relating to immigration, right now uh, in, in this country nothing doing nothing is not going to resolve or improve the situation so specifically what is it that you want the president and you want Congress to do well it's important to understand that nothing in the Senate passed immigration bill would fix the problem we see at the border in fact the president has said we need Congress to fix this Victims of Trafficking Act because it, it creates a level of procedural process that actually allows smuggling and cartel operations to abuse the process, and that's what's going on here. There's out, outright manipulation. Well, so, 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 okay, but so specifically, there's, there's a, two issues here. Let's start with the children at the border, the children, you know, trying to bring them to these processing uh, facilities. Right. What do you want? Are you just saying, hey, turn around, send them home, that's it? No questions asked, no hearings? Well, look, the, the, ultimately, the executive has broad emergency powers. They need to hold short hearings very quickly at the border and repatriate people within 48 hours. The, the um, unaccompanied minor law requires that y uh, young aliens be released within 72 hours uh, to HHS, and then they have to try to find a cust custodial parent or guardian. But that law that Senator Feinstein was the architect of never envisioned this kind of crisis. And, of course, what we know at FAIR is that it's very foreseeable that if you set up a loophole, smuggling operations are going to figure out how to take advantage of it. The president has asked Congress for a change in the law, but we believe the president already has authority under the immigration law to declare an immigration emergency and detain people at the, at the border and then hold very rapid hearings and repatriate people summarily. Now, the ACLU and other organizations want to have the procedural process that will take years, what effectively means nobody ever goes home. And one of the reasons why we have 12 million people here illegally is that we have an immigration system that no longer functions. Well, now they're moving immigration judges into emergency proceedings to have hearings, and, and as a result, the rest of the entire immigration control apparatus is crumbling around well, okay, our ears. So I, I, I want to, Raul, I want to have you respond to that. And I, so, so you know, Dan is, is in saying basically get him out of here in three days. Mm -hmm. You know, quick expedited hearings, get him out of here. There's an argument to be made here, though, looking at where these children are coming from, the countries they're coming from. Isn't there an amnesty argument here? Isn't that part of the procedure that we're talking about? Certainly, not necessarily amnesty, but uh, many of these children, because they are asylum, uh, excuse uh, me, uh, asylum, asylum, because the, they're coming from the other such violent, yeah. from such violent co uh, countries, they they could be eligible for temporary protective status, uh, refugee status, asylum. The, pro the president is seeking to change this law with Congress, and we'll see how that plays out. But aside from that, there's another compli complication. The U.S. has multiple, multiple international agreements with nations all over the world, specifically relating to children and asylum and refugees. So even if Congress did say and grant the authority, pre the president authority to send these children home, we couldn't do it without being in violation so, yeah, so, so Dan, so Dan, just, so Dan what, do you, what do you say to that, though? I mean, because the United States has existed for so long as this is a place you know, the, the people you know, fleeing trouble spots around the world, people fleeing life-threatening you know, a, a political upheaval or whatever around the world can come to the United States to save their lives, literally. Isn't there a case to be made here when you look at the conditions in some of these countries? 
Look, this is obviously a manipulated crisis. The president needs to lead, and he needs to reassure the American people that as the executive um, I mean, wait, commander uh, in chief, wait, 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 manipulated it's crisis. being manipulated, who's manipulated, manipulated by cartel, cartels and smuggling operations. They want the border patrol to be changing diapers and being distracted so they can run drugs through the border. This whole thing is being orchestrated. It's not normal for young people to be coming across the border unaccompanied unless it's being manipulated. Nothing about the situation in Central America has so radically changed that it would represent. Uh, a major ch ch cri a ch crisis of that kind. Ultimately, the president has created the crisis by sending a message around the world. U.S. immigration law is not being enforced. We're going to pass a big amnesty. The deferred action for childhood arrivals has been interpreted to mean if you're young and you get in, you won't have to leave. And then, of course, he's now talking about more executive, unilateral executive action. So, so you can't keep sending a message around the world that our immigration <laughs> laws aren't going to be enforced and not expect people around the world right, to take I, advantage of. Ra I know Ro wants to respond to that. I want to hear what you say to Ro. <laughs> well, uh, uh, a couple things. First of all, this whole narrative that they, it, it is true that the cartels are promoting a type of uh, disinformation, misinformation campaign to, to facilitate these kids getting here. But the whole notion that, that because of that, that it's the fault of the Obama administration that this is happening, is that is completely false. Now, you have to remember, many of these uh, young people, these are, these are kids. These, these are kids who are five, six, seven, eight. They, they don't know one thing about our immigration system. No one told them anything about DACA. They, they just did what their parents told them to do because their parents are so desperate for them to get a better shot, you know, leading a safe and productive life. And it's interesting because Mr. Stein was just saying that the pre he wants the president to take unilateral action, that he needs to act. And yet at the same time, he's saying that if the president does do something, it'd be a violation with his executive action. So it seems a little bit inconsistent that he wants him to act. And yet if he does act, he says that that's a violation well, of the law. I, I do want to ask you this, though, because the, 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 um, the, the argument here about, you know, uh, not just sending you know, the kids back, not just sending the undocumented kids back, um, it does raise the question, if, if they are let in, if a substantial number are let into this country permanently, doesn't that encourage it? How do you say no to the next wave? How do you say no to the right. wave after that? That's the challenge that our president has right now. I think, you know, obviously it's an evolving situation. I think he is doing the right thing, going to Congress, trying to thread the needle between what he can do on his own and also working with these governments in Central America because we have to attack that part of the problem as well. But what does not help this, this whole crisis is on the Republican side, they're really not doing anything other than finger pointing, grandstanding, blaming for the president for the situation. Very little of the name of solutions. And to me, I have to say, when I see, see these images of the people yelling at the bus and screaming, go home, I think pretty much most reasonable people would agree with me. That's not America. That's not who we are as a nation. That's a, a group of misguided people. And, and by way, just as a counterpoint, in Texas, which has been the, because it's, South Texas has been where so many of these kids are entering, that's the largest point of entry for these unaccompanied minors. In Dallas, uh, this has been reported in the Dallas Morning News, the city has been flooded with offers of, you know, charitable uh, offers, religious groups, clothing, people who want to help. And these are not necessarily right, people. No, there are, right, there are, there are, are people just, who are against just reform, wanting, but look at the, at they the, just the look human at side of this. These are children. Right. Right. fleeing for their lives and yeah, they want listen, to help. Right. Well, the problem is Cong Congress set up a specific law that now has an elaborate financial process for ju children who are judged abandoned. That means public education, health care, housing. This is clearly a sap to the taxpayer. How does this crisis help public education going to help American people actually meet their domestic priorities? We cannot be the home of last resort for all the world's displeased and dispossessed. Well, the, the administration has to recognize it's time to stop playing politics with our immigration policy. This idea of polarizing the well, Hispanic yeah, well, electorate uh, uh, at the expense of our sovereignty and stop. I want to broaden the conversation out here, too, because we are talking about the broader subject of immigration as well. The crisis on the border has forced President Obama to denounce the sudden influx of undocumented children, as we say, forcing him to sound more like an immigration hawk than the dove that he is. This is mm -hmm. the president in an interview with ABC News on Friday. Once those kids come across the border, there's a system in which we're supposed to process them, take care of them, until we can send them back. So is, is your so message what don't come? Oh, our message absolutely is don't send your children unaccompanied uh, on trains or through, uh, through a bunch of smugglers. That is our direct message to the families in Central America. Do not send your children to the borders. If they do make it, they'll get sent back. More importantly, they may, may not make it. In a Monday, he doubled down on that message. The children who are fortunate enough to survive it will be taken care of while they go through the legal process, but in most cases that process will lead to them being sent back home. 
I've sent a clear message to parents in these countries not to put their kids through this. And understand, by the way, for the most part, this is not a situation where these children are slipping through. They're being apprehended. Dan, the context for all of this is, you know, the president has been saying, and he said it this week, that he intends, if Congress doesn't, doesn't you know, turn around and act on immigration reform this summer, he intends to act uh, on immigration reform on his own through executive power to the extent that he thinks he has that power. What, you know, what is your solution? When we get beyond the question of these kids, what is your solution? We look at the immigration crisis in this country. We look at the millions of people who are undocumented. What do you want done well, there? Keep in mind, Bill Clinton understood this and past presidents have understood this. Nothing is more devastating politically to an administration than the appearance of loss of control of our national borders. Bill Clinton lost his only election in his view because of his mishandling of Cuban detainees at Fort Chaffee in Arkansas. George Bush understood this. You have to detain and interdict. You have to require aliens to apply from outside the country. The ACLU and others who but helped but organize... Dan, Dan, but Dan, we're, we're running a long time. The reason I'm asking this question, the way I ask it is, <clears throat> the millions who are already here, that's at the heart of immigration reform. That's at the yeah, heart of what look, Congress has been refusing to do. What will, do you do with not, the millions? Will not, what do you do with them? Look, we're not going to achieve a political solution to immigration until we address the question of how do we control future flow and, and affect enforceable limits. The, the question of what to do with all these people here now depends ultimately on the reforms that are constructed. Do, do you have, do you have, answer, do you have answer to the question? Millions well, of people. Obviously, many people here illegally need to be deported or encouraged to go home. There are other people in, 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 who might be allowed to stay under certain conditions, but in the end, <laughs> you have to craft a legislative compromise that provides balance. Isn't that what immigration reform is, though? Isn't that, that what immigration reform is, though? Isn't that what not, the Biden... No, that is not what that's was not that, addressing, what passed that's the not Senate. A, what passed the Senate would actually have made the whole situation worse. That's why the House won't bring it up. It's an, actually a legislative policy disaster. If your only solution is accommodate everybody who wants to come in, then pass the Senate bill. But if you want to have enforceable limits, you have to start over in 2015. Very quickly, Ralph. Okay, Steve, I know you're asking Mr. Stein for you know, a solution. It doesn't really seem to have one other than more deportations or mass deportations. We've seen that that was a disaster for the Republicans. Obviously, the solution is is you know some type of comprehensive comprehensive reform barring that the president take executive action which maybe it's not perfect it's not permanent but it's but at least it's it's action that's what the american people want and just fyi you know mr stein represents a group that is really on the radical fringe it has been designated a hate group by the oh, southern poverty law center so that's where he's coming from well, dan i'll just give you a quick quick response to that dan Look, we love group. We are a love group. We love America. We, we certainly like the idea that immigration properly controlled can help this country grow. But look, out of control immigration, violating the law, name calling and smears aren't going to advance the agenda. Working together as a common national community is. Let's all work together to solve the immigration crisis. All right. Thank you, Raul Reyes, Dan Stein. Appreciate it. Coming up, a tough new poll has some rough news for President Obama. The question is, is this permanent or can the president fight his way out of this mess? We're certainly seeing signs he wants to do battle. Plus, the 50 50 years ago today, the Civil Rights Act was signed. Race relations in the U.S. are immeasurably better today than they were in 1964. So why is it that the Civil Rights Act might not be able to have a chance of passing if it were introduced today? And we're marking another less celebrated anniversary. 25 years ago, a show supposedly about nothing debuted and changed what we expect out of a television show. And one of the show's semi-regular stars will join us later. Can you say Jay Peterman? And finally, if you checked your Wikipedia yesterday, you may have noticed a change in the president's cabinet. Chuck Hagel was out as Secretary of Defense, replaced by a national hero who emerged just yesterday. This is Hardball, a place for politics.